Hey, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel as we take a look at the Taurus new moon happening on May 19th, 2023. The chart we're looking at is set at 11.53 a.m. That's Eastern time. So be sure and adjust for your location on the planet. This Taurus new moon is occurring at 28 degrees, 25 minutes of Taurus in your chart. That's where the sun and the moon are conjunct and they are initiating a new cycle, a new beginning. And what you want to do is identify where you have this degree point in your chart by house, house placement. It could be in any house. And I have a video for you here on YouTube called how to find a degree point in your chart. It's a tutorial video if you need assistance in figuring out where this degree is for you. So every new moon is a beginning point of energy that unfolds over the next lunar cycle. So we have this Taurus new moon that you'll notice it's happening at 28 degrees towards the very end of Taurus. And we're going to be in that cycle for the next about a year and two months where we're going to have new moons in the last deacon of an astrology sign. And that's because we just had a lunar reversal begin with the Scorpio lunar eclipse. So all the new moons are going to be in the late degrees of an astrology sign, which is going to give energy to maybe some things that you haven't seen before. You're looking at it in a new way or in a new light. You're seeing something fresh and different. You're seeing something that perhaps is showing you a new take, a new approach, a new perspective. And with the Taurus energy here, you'll also notice that we have a team Taurus in effect as we have Jupiter that just entered Taurus on May 16th for the first time in 12 years. We have the North Node finishing up its journey in Taurus. It's actually only in Taurus for a few more weeks or so before it goes in to Aries. Then we have Mercury now direct in Taurus after being retrograde. So still in his shadow territory, but moving direct. Uranus now at 19 degrees of Taurus. This is new territory for Uranus. Uranus has not been at this degree point. Uh, so that is significant, especially in terms of world events and what is happening right now on the world stage, which is really big stuff, really chaotic, really insane as well. And then we have the sun and the moon in Taurus. So the Taurus areas of your chart are being amplified and highlighted right now, bringing your attention to what you value, what you want, as well as understanding perhaps any new choices that you're ready to make with this new moon and now that mercury is direct in taurus you might have a new plan coming together something that is showing up or seems to be the correct practical next steps that's all a part of the taurus energy where we look for stability security safety taurus wants to know what it can rely on what can i build on what is going to support my energetic foundation. And that might be something that comes up for you with the Taurus new moon is looking at, well, what is necessary for me? What makes my life simple? What gives me a sense of peace even? Because Taurus is a quieter energy, if you will. It is more about observing, reflecting, looking at what's around you, what's in front of you, what you want to pull in or magnetize in as well. Because with this strong focus on Taurus energy, I feel like there's something here that we've been deeply working through around reprogramming our self-value and our self-worth. This could be a launching point for standing in your power in a whole new way. And as I said that, I took a pause because of how this Jupiter is squaring Pluto retrograde in Aquarius, which is a new energy point. And I'm seeing this, this Pluto is known for transformation, evolution, truth. 
And it's also in the new territory of Aquarius, opening us up to some new energies in ourselves while squaring this Jupiter in Taurus. And I feel like there could be something here that maybe you feel you're being pushed to stand more in your self-value, your self-worth. And this could be through something you have to communicate or share, maybe something you have to declare. It could even be like, okay, I got to stand in my corner about this. I really got to stand strong and hold my ground, which is a strength of the Taurus energy, also a strength of the fixed signs, which would include Taurus and Aquarius. So this could be a new moon where you have to stand strong in really owning your value, your worth, what you bring to the table, what you do, what you offer, your gifts, because we've been moving through some big Taurus energies. And now with Jupiter here, there could be something that benefits you by remaining in your power. Now, the other side of the fixed signs is that, yes, they can stand strong, hold their ground, and be very clear in what they want. But there can also be that stubbornness. I'm not going to budge. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to move. Now, that could be something to just stay aware of because, of course, life is meant to grow. We're meant to evolve. So there's some things here where you're clear on, yes, I'm standing my ground and I'm aware of it, but there's also the energy here of a very beautiful support system where you could understand what is not worth fighting for or what doesn't matter for the long term. So the sun and the moon are sextiling Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces. This is new turf for Neptune as well. Neptune hasn't been to 27 degrees of Pisces before in our lifetime. So Pisces is in, I'm sorry, Neptune and Pisces is in a new degree point. Pluto has been at this degree point since March. Uranus is in a new degree point. Saturn and Pisces is in a new degree point. Jupiter is in a new degree point. So there's new energy here coming forward as these outer planets are moving into new places in your chart, activating new energy signatures. And so I feel like that's really significant for what we're moving into, especially as we go into the second half of the year here. So this sun and moon sextiling Neptune is also going to show you what you're just cool with. It's like, all right, that's fine. I'm not going to put too much energy into that. Or yeah, I, I said what I need to say. I'm good. I'm ready to let it go. This, um, you can see here, this Mercury at six degrees of Taurus is also sextiling the Saturn, providing more understanding of what you do want and what you're willing to commit to, as well as what you're willing to release. And that's what happens when these outer planets are in Pisces, is that there is change. Flexibility is required. It's really understanding, does this serve me for the long term? Is this really something I want? And so that could be part of this Taurus new moon, is that you're looking at, okay, I'm really clear on what I do want, and then there's some things I'm okay just phasing out, just phasing out. So the other part of this energy is that we have the planets here in Cancer and we have this Mars at the final degree of Cancer also sextiling the Sun and Moon and trining Neptune in Pisces. And this Mars in Cancer has potentially been frustrated or just figuring out what to do with his feelings and understanding the healthy, productive expression, or perhaps really holding things in. Sometimes this Mars in Cancer is operating off of resentment, and that's not healthy. So there's something here about emotionally cleansing what you need to release and let go of, and that's supported through this Mars trining Neptune, which was actually 
strongest when Mars was at 27 degrees. So it would have been about five days or so before this new moon. This new moon could show you what has emotional baggage. Like, and you're just like, okay, I got to get over this or I'm done with this. Or there's something about emotionally cleansing here that's important before Mars moves into Leo, which happens right after this new moon. Then we also have this Venus in Cancer. And Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And she's actually the ruling planet of all these planets and points in Taurus. So Venus is heightened here in Cancer, but she's kind, she's caring, she's empathetic, um, she's a good listener, she wants to support and offer, but she's also learning her boundaries. And she is approaching a square to Chiron in Aries which is often some kind of boo-boo or something hurts or it gets into her soft spots. It could feel like something isn't nice. <laughs> I know the most generic word, right? Nice. But there's like this sense of, okay, something um, could be coming up for her after this new moon as she squares Chiron. But as she travels through Cancer here, she's softer and she's more internal. And I feel like that's a strong energy signature with this Taurus new moon because we only have two planets in masculine signs. We have Pluto in Aquarius and Chiron in Aries. Those are the only two masculine energies here. Everything else is in a feminine energy, which are the earth and water signs. Now this Venus is traveling behind Mars, so she could kind of be cleaning up some stuff or helping to process whatever this Mars in Cancer has been moving through and also helping with the compassion piece, the self-compassion, also the self-kindness. I feel like this Venus is basically helping us Listen to ourselves, listen to our needs, listen to what feels good and what doesn't feel good, and to trust that, to value that as well. Now, I mentioned how there's only two signs or two planets in masculine signs, and then Mars will enter Leo, and that will be the third energy in a masculine expression and will be making a dramatic opposition to this Pluto, and then also squaring that Jupiter and the North Node. So this is the fixed grand cross that I have been mentioning on my channel here and discussing in my podcast. And when Mars enters the picture, things get set off. There is anger, there are reactions, um, there's something that he can't control that he has to deal with or look at. There is a very contentious energy, and that happens right after this new moon, and it feels like there, there's just a sense of be wise about what you engage in and what you go to battle about. If there's something coming up for you around this new moon, and it's really important, there could be unexpected oppositional forces and it's not personal, as we say, even though it can feel personal with that Mars. But this is Pluto's in charge of whatever is unfolding. It's not a great time for discussing, negotiating, or doing anything that's important to you personally. If you can hold off until later in May and early June, that would be advised when I look at these energies because as this Mars moves forward, he's only going to oppose Pluto for a few days. Then he's going to be squaring Jupiter and the North Node and Mercury. So this Mars and Leo is going to be really activated 
And it depends on how much he's cleared out emotionally because Mars can take the unprocessed, unfinished emotions from Cancer in to Leo. And then it gets really loud and really big and almost too much. So keep that in mind here that there's something about this Taurus new moon that does want us to be more self-aware, which would be an energy signature of these planets in Cancer, Taurus, and Pisces. Now, that means there's also a lovely harmony here. There's also something in the energy where you could feel like doing less um, that you need a break, you need some downtime, you want to enjoy the finer things in life, you want to get grounded back into your energy, and perhaps even feel like, everyone just leave me alone, I need to focus, I need to get some things done in my own way, on my own terms. Um, this could be an isolating energy where you just want to cocoon, and you want to be able to you know, do what you need to do without interference, without excessive interactions or people you know, pulling at your coat strings for stuff. Um, there's something about this Taurus new moon as well where the energy is going to shift as the moon moves forward into Gemini and then it's going to trine Pluto and it will be working nicely with Mars. And then the sun enters Gemini and will also trine this Pluto and sextile Mars. And I feel like once the energy moves from Taurus here, the sun and the moon, into Gemini, then things start to move more effortlessly. There's, there's more understanding. Okay, so if something has you stuck, during this Taurus new moon. And that's definitely the energy signature with the fixed grand cross, by the way. Feeling stuck and stagnant. Also, Pluto being your soul, requiring you to do something new and different. And Mars being your ego, saying, no, I don't want to, you can't make me, you're not the boss of me. Except that Pluto is basically the older, more advanced soul signature energy. And it's like Pluto wins you know, not to give away the spoiler, but the Pluto energy is stronger. So even if you have some kind of resistance or tantrum or your ego doesn't like it, Pluto is stronger here and the evolution is happening. The forward movement is happening. Now, it's not going to happen too much perhaps in this year because of how this Pluto then goes back into Capricorn in June and re-enters the earth sign energy, but Pluto returns here in January 2024, and Pluto is going to be like, remember that conversation we had in May? I'm bringing it back up. We're going to look at it, and it could be, this is interesting, it could be that something that happens here in May with this fixed grand cross, you need time to process it, work through it, especially if it's a big life change, a big life event, something significant in your world. And then you come back in January and you see it from a bigger perception, a bigger perspective as well. So there's something significant here about May, the middle of May around this Taurus new moon that is asking you to ground into your self-worth. Stand strong in that, stand strong in what you know matters to you. And this can definitely be financial with the strong Taurus energy. Financial changes, financial intentions, looking at your financial picture, making some new choices, some long-term choices, um, understanding where your money goes out and where you want it to come back in. Uh, maybe this is about spending. You do have to be aware of spending with this Jupiter in Taurus because you're basically wanna, gonna wanna grab a costco size shopping cart and fill it up. That's very Jupiter in Taurus. Like, let's just buy everything everywhere all the time. So this is looking at the reality of your energy, especially through financial channels. 
And you could be making some decisions here, especially since Mercury is now direct and you could say, okay, I've understood more what I need to do, what I don't need to do, what matters, um, what matters for the long term, what basically will provide me with more of what I want and how I wanna live my life. So financial choices are definitely highlighted as well here. And that's also going to play out on the world stage as we continue to see this Pluto in Aquarius squaring the North Node and the South Node in Taurus, which are energies of the financial axis. Um, so here's the Taurus North Node. The Scorpio South Node is down here. It's out of the camera view. But Pluto squaring the nodes means that things are changing on the world stage around the markets, financial energies. Um, this is already playing out. This is absolutely showing up here now where Pluto squaring Taurus and Scorpio is changing currency on the planet. And that this is a lifetime where we will probably not have paper currency for much longer considering that they're making it illegal. Have you heard about that? Yeah, that the you can't spend more than a thousand euros in cash on purchases anymore. They're moving everything to digital. Pluto and Aquarius squaring the North Node and the South Node. Um, so that's one lens to be aware of is how money is changing on the planet. Everything is becoming more digital so that it can also have data around it. The data that's being generated from money, from spending, every time you use Apple Pay, or even you know making things so automated and convenient, right? Selling it under convenience. There's also the Fed Now program. Have you heard about that? Yeah, the mainstream news doesn't report this stuff because the mainstream news is like cartoons. But there's big things happening that's changing our financial energy on the planet, it's moving into this Pluto in Aquarius where everything is becoming digital so that it can be surveilled, it can be watched, it can be looked at, controlled. So that feels like part of this Taurus new moon as well. And returning back to what I started with originally, this is about looking at what you value in your life, what matters to you, what you want, where you want your money to be spent or where you want your energy to go, how you want to use your energy. And because the new moon is at the end of Taurus, it then moves into Gemini and that brings in the new ideas, the new solutions, new information, new ways of doing that. So overall, the Taurus new moon here, it has lovely energy with a focus on Pisces, Taurus and Cancer and you might just feel like you're ready for a break you're ready for some downtime we've had a lot of intense solar flares from the sun we've had a lot of energy bursting forward and we're feeling it we're absolutely feeling it in a way that the mind doesn't always understand or know how to compartmentalize but there's a lot happening so I hope this Taurus new moon gives you a sense of returning to yourself, your priorities, what you can control, what is in front of you, uh, what you want to develop and grow during this lunar cycle, and hopefully give you some new ways of really connecting with what matters to you for the long term and what doesn't, and, and letting some things be complete, phasing something out, endings as well but they're favorable endings like you could feel like yeah it's just easy to let that go it's okay to be done with that yeah i'm good i don't need that anymore so that's also part of this taurus new moon as well so thank you so much for joining me i hope this has given you some good things to consider for yourself and how you intend to work with the taurus new moon energies and i'll be back here shortly as we discuss more about the astrology of the year and next up, I'll be doing a video on the Sagittarius full moon. Thank you so much for joining me. And please check out the playlists here on YouTube, as you'll find a ton of videos helping you understand more about your astrology chart 
and more about who you are in this lifetime. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon.